Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to introduce Venn diagrams to you. Venn diagrams, you might have heard the term before just in casual conversation but not really studied them yet. Uh, they're just a way to visualize sets um, and a way that groups of objects share things in common. We'll outline our Venn diagram with a rectangle, so everything in the rectangle will be in our universal set. That will be all of the things that we're considering for our Venn diagram. And let's just say that we have two sets, we'll call them A and B, in our universal set. There's a couple of possibilities of how they might look together. So one, possibly, is that they're disjoint. They have no overlap, there's nothing in common, no elements in both sets A and B. That's one possibility. We could also have the possibility where one set, everything in that set, is in another set, right? So we might say here that B is actually a subset of A. Everything contained in B is also in A. The problem is when we start sketching some sort of a Venn diagram with sets A and B, it's very likely that we won't know the full relationship of sets A and B. Do they overlap? Is one contained completely in the other? So this configuration where they overlap a little bit is actually going to work best for us. And if they don't actually share anything in common, then we'll be able to see that in the way that we label the different regions here. One of the ways that we can use Venn diagrams is to actually label how many elements belong to each region of my diagram here. So you notice I have four regions. I have a region in the middle here, I have a region over here where it says A, I have a region over here where it says B, and then I also have this region outside of the circles as well. So we have four regions. So right away if I look in the center I can see I have six elements in the center. Those six elements are in the overlap of both circles. In other words this six here is in A and it's also in B. And remember we call that an intersection. Now if I want to say the number of elements in that region then I can use a little n. So we have a lowercase n and then parentheses. This reads the number of elements in the intersection of A and B, and we would say the number of elements in A intersect B here is 6. That's where they overlap. So these six objects are in A and they are in B. So you'll notice the way we've drawn the diagram here, my set A and my set B, actually they have two regions inside of each circle, right? So set A has this group of four elements and then it also has this group of six elements that overlaps with B. So if we're looking at the total number of elements in set A, then we would add the four and the six and the total number of elements in A is actually ten elements. We can do a similar thing with B. We have seven elements that are only in B, yes, but we also have the six elements in B that overlap with A. So we have six elements plus seven elements. We would say that the number of elements in B is 13. Our number three out here in the diagram tells us how many elements belong only to the universal set, but they don't belong to either set A or set B. They're outside of both circles, any circles that we have. So these three elements don't belong to A or to B. They're just in the universal set. If this was some sort of a survey or a list of data that we had and we wanted to know the total number of elements being considered in our universal set, we'll just need to add up the elements in each of the four regions here. So we would take 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 3 and we would get the number of elements in the entire universal set is 20 elements. If we want to think about how to picture some of our set operations in terms of Venn diagrams, if we want to picture what A intersect B looks like, A and B, we said that that would be where the two circles overlap. So that's the part of our Venn diagram that symbolizes A intersection B. And then if we think of the union of those two sets, A union B, remember that's all the elements in A or in B or in both. So these are all the elements in A over here. These are all the elements in only B over here, and then these are all the elements in both. So anything in any part of the circles A and B is going to be in the union of A and B. Here we have A complement. So remember, complement means not in that set. So all of the things not in set A would be anything in the Venn diagram that is outside of circle A. And then obviously, if we had B complement, that would be all of the regions that are not inside of circle B. We can also use circles to create a Venn diagram with three sets. So if we have three sets in our universal set, then we make a Venn diagram with A, B, and C. Sort of in a, if you imagine putting A, B, and C triangular from one another. So we have two overlapping and then we have one center that sort of cuts through the center of their intersection at the top here. This is sets A, B, and C inside of our universal set. You'll notice that we end up with double the amount of regions when we add this third set. We end up with eight regions. Here I've labeled all of them. And we can imagine some of these intersections. You notice there are many overlapping regions. So if you think about if we have A intersect B and intersect C where they all intersect, that's going to be the exact center. That's the region that's in all three circles. It's in A, in B, and in the C circle as well. So this center point will be the intersection of all three. 
Here we have our A intersect B. It looks much like it did before when we had the two circle bend diagram, but we have two regions here because now we have circle C sort of cutting through that middle section there. You can see a similar thing happens with A intersect C. So these two regions are the two regions that are both in the A circle and they're also in the C circle. And if we look at something like B intersect C, then that will be the regions that are inside of the B circle that are also inside of the C circle. Okay, everyone, hopefully this gives you a good intro to Venn diagrams, how you can picture complements and unions and intersections when you look at these. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.